She learned to read Latin <laughs> and handle parchment deeds dating from the 12th century, useful skills to have in Australia. After graduating, Josephine worked in the archives of Barclays Bank in Manchester, where she discovered she was interested in making it easier to create records and make them available than to save them. Josephine learned what it was like to work in the real world of records management at, at Gold Coast City Council before joining Queensland State Archives. These days, it is all about engaging with government agencies to improve record keeping across the public sector, as well as finding the, that perfect glass of Aussie Shiraz. <laughs> Please welcome Josephine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, um, everyone, and uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak to you this afternoon. Um, and hello to everybody out there who might be uh, watching on the live stream. Hopefully there's some people out at uh, the archives at Runcorn uh, watching as well, so no pressure. Um, so let's see how we go today. So some of you have heard me um, speak previously, um, and today I want to talk to you about um, the records governance policy that Queensland State Archives um, released earlier this year. Um, and it's been quite good listening to all of the presenters uh, in the last couple of days because it's almost like they've all been preempting what I was going to say to you um, and leading up to what this presentation I hope is going to be able to give you. Um, oh, helps if I turn it on, doesn't it? <laughs> First fail. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, I just wanted to give you a bit of a heads up around who Queensland State Archives is and what we do. Um, <clears throat> on your tables, there's a, uh, a few one pages that um, give you a bit more detail around what Queensland State Archives is, um, if you're interested and want to know a bit more about us. Um, but basically, we're established as the Queensland Government Archive, um, and we're published under the PETA legislation, the Public Records Act 2002. Um, we look after government agencies, which under the legislation are called public authorities, and we work with the roughly uh, 500 different agencies, and that can be local government, departments, universities, government-owned corporations, statutory authorities, so anyone um, that fits into that category. Um, we're very much around providing access to records, so we hold uh, the government archive on behalf of the state, um, and we have approximately 67 kilometres worth of paper records out at our storage facility or our repository out at Rancorn. Um, and you are uh, welcome to come and visit the archives and come and do research using those um, records. The other part of the organisation is around uh, improving record keeping. So we're in the business of uh, the governance of record keeping across Queensland government. So we can provide policy standards, standards and advice and we're that regulatory authorisation for um, the record keeping standards across the state. Um, and we're also looking at um, how we can bring you some organisational benefits for record keeping across the state. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. We're all record keepers, we're all information managers, so we all know why good record keeping is important. Um, it's not just about the fact that there is a legislative requirement that means that we have to do record, record keeping and we have to manage records on behalf of our organisations. Um, but there are also a vast range of organisational benefits around why we do what we do, why we're all here in the room today, and why we've all got the jobs that we do. Um, but these are some of the ones that um, we like to spruik to our agencies and um, help to have those conversations with um, our uh, strategic leaders around why good record keeping is important. Um, as well as the organisational benefits, which are things like, you know, providing information that you can trust um, and, uh, you know, saving you time and money in um, managing your records well. There's also the, obviously, the support, supporting of transparency and accountability across government. That's like a high level reason about why we do what we do. And it was actually quite good that when we were walking around the room earlier and looking at those pink um, uh, post-it notes around, you know, the jobs of the future and that one was very much coming up about being able to trust the information and the accountability um, of government and what we do and the um, democracy of government across. So if there's all those benefits around uh, why we do record keeping, why is it so hard? 
why is it so difficult? Um, or why do we think it's difficult? Or why do our agencies think that it's difficult? Um, it's a very complex issue. Um, and it can be that processes may not be clear or defined. It might be that um, there are different approaches within agencies. All agencies are different. We've got 73 local governments across the state and we all do things slightly different, even though we might be responsible for the same thing. The whole transition from physical to digital that um, we've been talking about today in the presentation earlier um, was very much about that transition from physical to digital. There are so many different types of records out there in the world and that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and again, both in the physical and the digital world. So how do we even start to imagine how we could manage those records now and into the future? The long-term and short-term factors around um, what do we need for immediate business use and what do we need for the future? What do you need for your organisation immediately and what might you need going on into the future? <coughs> And also at the moment, um, record keeping is, on the whole, um, still quite a human heavy process for what we do. There's quite a lot of still human intervention into managing the records of our organisations. So that's some of the reasons around why record keeping is so difficult. So in the world of state archives and our regulatory role, we've been trying to achieve and raise minimum levels of compliance um, across the Queensland government. Um, as you know, there are, uh, we um, on occasion do surveys to find out what the state of record keeping is across the Queensland government and that was roughly when we did that two years ago standing at about 15% compliance with the uh, legislation and the standards that we've um, put together. <coughs> so we're looking at trying to just achieve a small goal um, and raise the level of compliance for record keeping up to a minimum of 95%. So we could, you know, lower the standards to an absolute minimum, uh, you know, so that everybody could absolutely meet that requirement. Or we could come up with some policies and standards and things that we think might be able to help you achieve that. So we released the records governance policy earlier this year. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to you as well about the baseline survey um, at the end of my presentation about when you might expect to see that as well. And that's when we'll start to think about how we measure um, you know, the compliance and how you're meeting some of the requirements of the policy. So what is it or what, what do you have to do with it now that it applies to probably the majority of agencies uh, within this room, the ones that you represent? It is very much around lifting government capability. Um, it is a set of policy requirements that are designed to help you uh, raise record keeping to a strategic level within your organisation. Um, it helps you, hopefully, to start to support and achieve the strategic goals of your agency and those that you work for. Um, it encourages agency to prioritise based on risk and value. And thank you to everybody else that's talked about that over the last two days, because obviously that message has got through. Um, you know, this is not about so much around compliance um, and just saying that you have to meet the uh, requirements of the Public Records Act or what the State Archivist says. This is very much around um, prioritising what you do. We don't all have endless resources. Um, uh, as the previous speaker said, you know, put your resources into the uh, records and information that has significance and high value for you. We're hoping that it gives you a flexible and simplified approach to records management. Um, it gives you some opportunities to do record keeping how you want to do it in your organisation. And there's only six policy requirements. So for anyone that used to know the information standards inside out, we've reduced the number of standards that you need to comply with or meet, um, and you've only got six within your agency that you need to follow. So what we have come up with is the scenario of you being able to choose your own adventure. This is very much around 
what works for your organisation, what works for the records within your organisation. And I agree that that can be slightly scary, and but hopefully not the worst day of your life, um, as the uh, picture on the um, screen shows. Um, but what does that mean for you? Uh, you know, what does that mean if Queensland State Archives is no longer saying to you that you do need to have an EDRMS um, or a, a business classification scheme to meet the requirements of the policy? It means that you are free to choose however you meet those requirements as long as you are meeting those requirements. Um, and these are not requirements that we've just suddenly plucked out of the air. You know, this is based on research and feedback from our um, agencies and from research that we've done, you know, across all of the archival jurisdictions and the areas that we work in. So what does it mean for you and your organisation? So I'm going to go through uh, the policy requirements um, and see what they could possibly mean for you and also how we might be able to meet them. So this is where, after lunch, we might have to have some audience participation. <laughs> So hopefully you've all read your records governance policy because there'll be questions at the end if you haven't. Um, so start having to think about how you've started meeting some of these requirements. So policy requirement one around agencies must ensure records management is supported at all levels of the business. Now when we were originally designing the records governance policy, we were going to have this one as number six. And then we realised that this might actually be one of the hardest ones to achieve because this is changing your record keeping culture within your organisation and it's also about trying to get that strategic level support for record keeping within your organisation. So that's very much around what this policy is about. Your record keeping culture and how you can get support from above. The three things that you have to do are around assigning formal records management responsibilities within your agencies at all levels, so who's responsible for what. Um, for you to be able to provide appropriate advice and guidance to within your agency and how they might apply those record keeping standards within your agency. And very much around how do you foster a positive, innovative and collaborative record keeping culture within your organisation. This is probably, I would say, one of the key things that you can do to achieve this. Who is your record keeping champion within your organisation? Who is the person that in your organisation absolutely 100% believes in records and information management? Who can walk the talk? Who at every, every possible opportunity will tell anybody that listens about how wonderful record keeping is? and how re wonderful record keeping is in your organisation so that you can become an exemplar and a shining light of record keeping across government. So who is it within your organisation that you can tap into? And it doesn't have to be the person at the top. It can be anyone within your organisation. It can be anybody who can scroop record keeping on your behalf and on behalf of the agency. So who is it? Who is it that you need to go back to to your organisation and tap on the shoulder and say, look, we've got a really great opportunity here to improve record keeping or make um, record keeping front and centre from our organisation. How can we possibly do that? How can we make that happen? So who is it in your organisation? As I said, we need someone within your organisation to be able to walk the talk. We want to be able to leverage existing strengths strength and successes. To foster a culture of innovative record keeping, change your language. You know, if your organisation goes, oh God, they're talking about record keeping again, they're talking about records, don't call them records. Talk about them as business assets, business information, data, you know, and start changing your language up so that it meets the requirements of your business. You know, so we start making record keeping sexy. Um, I liked yesterday when I think it was Vanessa that was talking about telling stories and using your records. Absolutely 100%. You have got a huge amount of information and data at your fingertips in your records that can tell the story of your organisation, that can sell your successes um, and tell everybody how wonderful you are. 
So how do we get those records out there? How do we get them on the front foot? Um, how do we make that happen within your organization? So these are just some of the suggestions. And as I said, this is backing up what people have said over the last couple of days around how you can do that within your organization. The changing culture is one of the most difficult things that you can do in your organization. So what else is there that you can do within your organization to make this happen? Any suggestions or success stories about what's happening so far? How do you get that high level support? Who's your champion? Yep. Oh, we need a microphone. Sorry. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> yep, there you go. Hello. <laughs> okay. With me, what I have to do is, because it's just me um, doing what I do, I um, I guess just sell yep. our records, record keeping. I make sure that I go around and um, have client meetings. Yep. And when I say client, they're the people I work with, um, you know, different areas. Yep. And I just sit them all down and um, um, I, I also do training, but this is separate to what I do. And so I just talk to them about, you know, how important it is about your record keeping yep. and what you have to do and make fun, make it yep, fun. absolutely, you know, make it and fun. Yeah, and if you engage with them that way, I think that's an easier way to go. Excellent. That's what I do. Good. Any other suggestions? Anyone else? <laughs> Give Keith the microphone. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. What we've worked out and found out over the last few weeks, and we've run a couple of sessions on this in Brisbane around how and we can help mm. people implement this policy yeah. was the fact that it's a matter of us being salespeople and giving them Absolutely. the benefit and the value more so than the compliance yep. and getting that balance right and understanding the business to help you sell that product Absolutely. and sell that information. As we found yesterday, um, uh, <laughs> Uh, record keepers are good communicators, but we can't follow instructions around how to move two steps to the left. Um, but, you know, we can um, communicate with each other when, when we get that opportunity. So take whatever opportunity you can to talk about record keeping and how important it is to your organisation. Get your elevator pitch ready um, to talk about it. And, um, you know, and if you meet your CEO in the, you know, the elevator or in the tea room or whatever, talk about the great work that you're doing and put it out there. Lead by example, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Walk the talk. Walk the record keeping talk. So policy requirement number two. Agencies must systematically manage records using governance practices that are integrated and consistent with broader agency framework. So this is about elevating record keeping into the strategic area of your organisation. Now, Record keeping areas sit in all different parts of the organisation. They sit in IT, they sit in policy, they sit in corporate, they sit in all different parts of the organisation. But tap into, oops, getting tangled up, um, tap into the governance structures that you already have. So, how does information get communicated down from the top down to everyone else into your, your organisation? How do decisions get made? Who's your strategic committee that you need to tap into? Um, what are those broader uh, governance structures that you have within your organisation that you can get on the agenda? How do you, so for example, if you're in a, in a, you work for a council, um, <laughs> there's um, certain things going on with councillor records at the moment. How do you get it onto the agenda to talk to councillors about how important record keeping is for them? Um, how do you get it onto your corporate um, committee structure? How do you get it onto your high level committees? Who's the person that you need to be able to talk to and say, look, I've got something that I really need to tell the rest of the organisation about. Um, how do I tap into that? And then when you've started being able to do that, um, how do you implement then appropriate and fit for purpose documentation and processes and procedures that will back that up? So you've talked about it, you've spoke about it, then how do you show the organisation the doings? How do you do what you do?
So these are some of the things that I've said that you can do. Get it onto the corporate agenda. Find out how information is disseminated from the top. So um, the last couple of months, um, a number of my team were ringing, um, and some of you in this room may have had a, um, a phone call from a couple of people in my team, um, talking about the records governance policy and the disposal threes and other things that QSA is up to at the moment. Um, and it was um, not astonishing, it was surprising to us the number of agencies that hadn't realised or didn't know that the policy was out or that the disposal freeze was in place. Now, under our legislation, um, your person at the top, your CEO, your DG, whoever that is, is the person responsible for record keeping. Um, we have a duty to advise that person at the top and hopefully that information gets disseminated down. In, well, that's what we thought. <laughs> Obviously, in some organisations, that doesn't happen. So find out how that information gets trickled down into your organisation. Get in the ear of the EA or whoever it is that supports your person at the top and find out and go, so when something comes in from Queensland State Archives and there's some new advice or some new direction comes out, how do we get that out there to the wider organisation? How do we get that information out there? Start tapping into those networks and things that you've got. Work with the, or the areas of your organisation that use records on a regular basis or are heavy users of records. Um, build friendships and um, networks with those people and partnerships with those people. People like your legal people, RTI, audit, the ones who can't do their business unless they've got accurate information. How do I make friends with those people? Where are they storing their records? Um, what are they doing with it? Because if you get them on your side, they'll then start telling everybody else about how wonderful record keeping is. They will be your best friends. You know, and if you save the organisation from a great big legal fail because you were able to find the records or the records were available to go into court, job done. Find out about what other legislation you might be required to meet the requirements of. So there's, obviously there's a number of local governments in this room. Uh, there's a local government act and that tells you that there are certain pieces of, uh, you know, um, there are certain records that you are required to keep or create or whatever. If you're a GOC or a statutory authority, it, it, it applies the, the same. There are certain legislation, in as well as the Public Records Act, that mean you have to meet. Have a look at those and see what that means for you. Implement a framework to find out how you're measuring up. So, how are you doing? How are you going? How are you managing your records at the moment? Are you meeting the requirements of the policy or what your agency requires? How are you benchmarking against other agencies? You know, get a group of local governments together and um, see how you're measuring up, see what's happening in that world. Um, have a bit of a competition around, you know, how your uh, record keeping management is going. So how are you going to measure that in your organisation? What are your success factors? What are you going to do? And again, move from compliance to risk to add value. This was, um, a, again, some, one of the speakers was talking about this as well. Let's not talk about some, I know I've just said, <laughs> have a look at the legislation to see what you're supposed to do, but that's not your main focus. How do you move away from just saying, oh, we've got to be compliant with the Public Records Act? Um, you know, what is the risk if you don't manage your RTI requests? What is your risk if you don't manage your finance records and a big contract doesn't get paid? Um, what is the risk if, um, uh, you know, that those sorts of things don't happen? So move from compliance to risk to make sure that records can add value to your organisation. Any other suggestions on that one, how you might be able to do that? <laughs> Sorry, I keep making you stand up. <laughs> Any suggestions on that one? Getting it on, who's had success in getting it onto the corporate agenda? Fiona, I know you have. <laughs> how, do you, how do you make that happen? How did that happen? Things we do is actually tap into all the processes that are already there and embed a record yep. keeping into it. So things like when systems being decommissioned, yep. um, we actually can sign up on those or participate in those. Yep. When systems are being developed, we've got a certificate to provide. Um, we actually regularly report to all the ICTC sort of committees. Yep. 
تجربه چی لطف داره یا به زیست بلد یا جافتن یا آدم پلان پرایت Absolutely. Get your feet under the table. Excellent. Is there any others? No, thank you. And I know that that's been really successful in your department. Um, agencies must create complete unreliable records. Now, we deliberately moved away from um, the previous phrase that is still in our legislation but was the, um, full and accurate. Um, and we've moved to this phrase around complete and reliable. Because we think that this gives you more a more accurate representation of what we're trying to achieve. Um, and this is very much around uh, the record keeping mechanics of what we do. How do we make sure that your records um, are, uh, have metadata around them? How do you know that they're meaningful and have context around them? Um, how do we know that they are authentic and secure and that the people who need to access them can access them when they need to? Um, so this is very much around um, how do you make those mechanics of record keeping happen. Um, and this is where, you know, you identify the records you need, the how, when, what, who and what, uh, uh, who of the records and the security and preservation. How do you integrate them? So the session, um, you know, about how you integrate um, systems together so that you're, um, you know where the records are or the information is within your organisation. Think about record keeping when you're thinking about business systems. You know, um, uh, Fiona just said if there's a, uh, a business system being developed or is being decommissioned, um, how do you get your thing under the table at that point to see whether there are re any record keeping implications about what's going on with that particular system? Oh, bless you. <laughs> so, what about this one? Any suggestions on this one on how you can make it happen? Is this more the realm of the record keepers and stuff and making this stuff happen in the background? Any thoughts on this one? <laughs> this is what we do. This is your, you know, your classification schemes and your EDRMSs and uh, you know that sort of thing. So making sure that you've got those robust um, processes and procedures in place and like I said, the record keeping mechanics of what you do. So that's very much. But, you know, the creating complete and reliable records is about what records can you trust. You know, Simon was saying this morning about um, if all the AI is going to start, um, you know, absorbing all of that information and being able to make decisions for us, um, how do we make sure that we trust that data and that information that's going in there? So how do we make sure that our records are complete and reliable. Maybe that's one to think about. Policy requirement number four. Agencies must acti actively manage permanent high value and high risk records and information as a priority. So this is around where do you put your resources. Um, you know, not all records are created equal. You know, at the moment we have uh, records along the lines of transitory records, records that you have to keep for a temporary period of time, and records that then have ongoing and um, permanent retention value, both to your organisation and to um, agency, uh, and then to the um, the state of Queensland after um, your use is finished for it. So, how do you uh, decide decide how you're going to identify those permanent high value and high risk records and do document the process that processes that you'll use. So yet, yeah, um, Alyssa previously said, yeah, you've got a retention and disposal schedule um, at your disposal <laughs> um, that you can use to determine how long uh, those certain records um, you need to keep. Now, risk is not just associated with the, the record that you have to keep permanently or for a very long time. It's also what records are valuable to your organisation. What would happen or um, you know, if there are certain records within your organisation, what would happen if you lost them? What happened if there was a disaster? 
um, you know, the, the, what we used to call vital records. Um, you know, what would happen if um, your payroll records um, suddenly disappeared and no one within your organisation could get paid anymore? Um, what would happen if you couldn't access your land records anymore or you couldn't find them? Who owns what? Um, you know, your personnel records, your finance records to make sure that um, your bills are getting paid. If you're in health, for example, um, your medical records of your patients are going to be key and critical to your organisation. Without them, you can't operate and you can't give um, uh, good care, health care to uh, individuals um, you know, uh, coming to you for medical care. So what is it within your organisation? Not the transitory stuff, not the, um, not the stuff that basically as soon as a transaction has happened, that's it, there's no further value for it. Um, you know, looking at the business processes and going, what records um, uh, should we be putting our efforts into? Where are they? Where are they located? What systems are they in? Who's got access to them? How do I use them? You know? So it's those sorts of things that this one um, is talking about. And monitoring those records um, and including access to them so that you've got the right security and access controls and things in place, um, including the ones in business systems and applications, and making sure that that's where your focus is, that's what you're concentrating on. So again, who creates and uses the most critical records in your organisation? Who do you need to make friends with? Who do you need to know where the records are kept? Do some sort of assessment or audit. Go around and find out where they all are. Do what Gimpy did and go out and find all of those 15, 15 different storage areas um, of where records are kept that um, the majority of people in council didn't know what, what they had and where they were and um, that information is now going to be able to be used for the organisation. Again, like I said, tap into your business continuity processes. What would happen to your organisation if there were certain records that you couldn't get access to? Highlight your permanent value records. Why are they important to you, to your agency? But also, why are they important to the community? What's that ongoing value that those records have um, once your business use for them has ceased? And also, work with us. Um, so, work with Queensland State Archives. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, um, work, find out what record you've got at State Archives, for example that you might not know that you've got? What could you use them for? How can you access them? Um, uh, work with QSA on if you're decommissioning a business system. You know, find out what's going on. Work on some, if you're coming up with some key innovative projects, um, for example, um, put your hand up and come and work with us. You know, you might know that um, there's been a couple of um, record keeping sprints that we've done with QUT recently where we've been trying to reimagine what reimagine what the future of record keeping would look like. Um, and some of you in this room have been um, working with us on that and helping us to answer those questions. So we're trying to push the boundaries on some of these things and come up with some of these solutions for the future. So any suggestions or comments on that one? Good. Oh, quick. <laughs> Microphone. <laughs> Um, I've worked with, um, and I'm sure Louise is happy for me to say this, at SEQ Water, mm. and we actually did a major records assessment mm. audit for the purpose actually for digitisation yep. because the policy wasn't in place. Huge exercise, um, but a really interesting one. Yep. And we did exactly that. So as you mentioned earlier, some of the things in the GRDS weren't necessarily, they, weren't, they were yep. far from permanent actually, yep. but they were definitely high value to Absolutely. SEQ Water. Yep. But we also found that there were records at particular times when they had a higher risk than at other times. Exactly. For example, everyone's probably aware of CQ Water was going through a class action. Yep. And a lot of the records that we provided weren't necessarily records that you would have kept long term, yep. but because of legal issues, they were high risk at yep. the time. The biggest issue we had was finding that people wanting to be the custodians of these records. <laughs> Everybody wanted them. So <laughs> let alone finding out who they should be, mm. them actually taking the responsibility and saying, yeah, they're our records. Mm. And I'm not talking about archiving mm, 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 old records. Mm, I'm talking about active records. Yeah. Oh, well, no, everyone uses those. Why should I be responsible? Mm. So yeah, that was just one, but I just want to let everyone know it's a really good exercise. So we did every record. So we mm. had, you know, really short-term staff to long-term permanent staff. Mm. Um, so they're actually ahead of the game and they've already got an assessment, which is really good. 
Good on, I think you would. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I just want to say, it is a long process yeah, yeah, and you is. do need to do exactly what you've said all the way through, yeah. which is um, collaborate and consult with the business. Absolutely. Because they know their records. Yeah. We think we know all the records, but we don't. I yeah, guarantee exactly. everyone out the there business. that the business have got far more records Absolutely. than you know about. So, yeah. yeah, And that's a good point about the responsibility for them and the custodianship of them and stuff. Um, so that's where maybe, I'm just thinking off the top of my head now as you said that, that... Um, Record keeping is everybody's responsibility. It's a corporate responsibility. So um, it, it's not necessarily oh, this business area owns it. They are the records of the organisation. Therefore, we're making them available and accessible and usable for everybody. Um, but um, yeah, so that, that's a good point. Uh, how, do you, how do you change that messaging? This is everybody's responsibility. Any others? Some of the techniques we use are macro appraisal, so yep. actually looking at the functions of your organisation and then mapping across your retention disposal permanent prices, and then making use of things that other people have done, because I sit in a very large IT division, other people have done the information asset register. Yes, and information, information asset register, registered, yes. And then we map the record keeping components to that. Um, actually but incorporated into that so that you Absolutely. then do business systems assessment for records compliance yep. and that becomes a sort of de facto standard that they all need to go through. Yep. So leveraging other people's efforts Absolutely. Um, we're finding is quite successful. Yep. The records governance policy sits under the QGEA um, uh, framework, Queensland Government Enterprise Architecture, um, which is run out of um, Queensland Government Chief Information Office. And so they've got a whole suite of policies and standards around how to manage your data and your information, and this is just one component of it. So if you're doing some of that work, you know, if you're doing information asset, um, uh, creating an information asset register, if you're doing an information audit, bring in your records into that as well. You know, we're, we're talking we're talking about the same thing: information assets, um, record keeping, you know, data management, knowledge management. It's all part of the same thing. So bring those. Work with people to bring that in. Policy requirement five. Agencies must make records discoverable and accessible for use and reuse. Now, this is where we think that there is a huge opportunity for you to be able to use the records and your organisation to be, to be able to use the records that you've got. Um, now, I know there's been a bit of confusion around um, one of the elements in there about decide what business systems and applications are approved for use by your agency. And I think we've used the term whitelisting in the um, in the policy now what we mean by that is that um, in some government departments there are there is a list of applications and business systems that you are approved to use um, you know so you can't go rogue and introduce some new system that's going to completely destroy your network um, for some of you, the smaller agencies you know you've got IT people in your organization what are those systems and things that you can use within your organization that's what we're talking about when we're talking about those whitelisted um, uh, applications and systems. Um, so find out um, what those systems are and find out what records are in them. We'll find out what record keeping functionality already sits there. Um, develop and implement processes so that, you, so that you can find records when you need them. Um, again, with Gimpy, finding out that there, 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 there were those 15 storage areas um, where there were records that nobody knew what they had. Do that as well with the digital records. Where are they sitting? Are they sitting on network drives? Um, what do you do with them? Who are, whose are they? Who looks after them? Who's responsible for them? And then monitor the health of your records. Have you got records sitting in systems that haven't been accessed for 10 years and can you still access them? Are they still available? Um, you know. Uh, technology and things deteriorate over time, so can you still get to those records when you need them? And as I said, this is where there are great opportunities for you to be able to use your records now and into the future. Um, find out who uses your records and how they can be reused. Find out how you share information externally and internally. This is about using the power of the information that sits in your records. Um, use those records for a purpose beyond which they were originally created to start to be able to make um, decisions for the future, to look at trends um, around what you can use those records for. Um, 
make sure that your staff know where those records are, how they can access them, and how they can use them. How do you make them available to everybody? And the one that I like that you know has been coming up, Vanessa said, tell rec tell stories using the records, make them indispensable. Um, what are those stories that you can tell? What are the successes that are happening within your organisation? You know, what's those uh, key statistics that you can turn into a dashboard and tell everybody how wonderful you are? Um, you know, how do you use the records to tell those stories? And again, know what records you've got at Queensland State Archives and how you can access them. So there are agencies within the room that have records at Queensland State Archives. What are they? Do you know how you can get them back from us? Do you know that there's um, a file issue service that we provide that we can give the records back to you? Um, do you know that you can come into the search room at Runcorn and be able to access them and use them? Do you actually know what you've got in our custody? Do you know that you're still responsible for them? Um, you've got an anniversary coming up. Did you know that there's records at QSA that might be able to help? We've got photographs of your area. Um, you know, you might be able to use them in some marketing campaigns that you've got. Find out what you've got and be able to um, use those records. And of course, we talk about disposal. <laughs> How do we get rid of the records when we don't want them anymore? Um, this hasn't really changed because there is still a legislative requirement under the Public Records Act that you need the State Archivist authorization to be able to get rid of records. Um, but this is very much around doing this in a planned, um, a systematic way, doing it on a regular basis, um, documenting what you've got rid of because at some point in the future you might need to prove that you lawfully got rid of records. Um, have a look at digitization and um, digital processes. You know, we had the presentation earlier about transferring your physical into uh, digita digitized images. Um, how do you make that happen? Is that viable for your organization? Have a look at um, how you can make it easier. Um, you know, we have to uh, get approval for certain things and things to, um, to make disposal happen. Can you get blanket approvals in place for your organization? Can you make that happen? You know, get a, uh, um, a standard approval in place for timesheets or whatever it is, finance records, that you don't have to keep going back to your delegate and say, please can get rid of these. Have a look at those processes. Any quick ones on that one in ways that people have done that in a different way? We heard before about the digitization impact. We've got a lot of this sort of stuff on our website in terms of how to do a um, disposal process and things. And get in touch if you're um, starting to think about that and having a, having a clear out, see what we can do. So some key takeaways. I had to ask what TLDR means. Does anyone know what it means? Too long, don't read. <laughs> Apparently it's a young person's thing. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> um, so there's not a huge amount of read, uh, words on here. Um, so these are some of the things uh, for each of those um, policy requirements to think about. Find a champion who's going to walk your record keeping talk for you. Tap into your current um, governance structures um, and use them to your best advantage. Make and keep the records you need and be able to find them and use them in the future. Um, prioritize and allocate the resources that you've got for your um, significant high value records. Look at how you use records and how you can re reuse them to make better decisions for your organization and you then get rid of them at the end. <laughs> um, any questions on that? Because then I'll just quickly mention the baseline survey. Any questions? Good, my job is done. Um, the baseline survey. Now, you would have heard that we will be um, issuing a baseline survey um, at some point in the future. And originally, it was going to be this year, but things sometimes don't pan out the way that you want. Um, so uh, the baseline survey is um, replacing our previous biannual record keeping survey. And this is looking at how you meet the current requirements of the records governance policy. Where do you sit at the moment? It's going to be a self-assessment um, uh, process, but we do want you to be um, as honest as you can because this is a baseline to help us move forward. This is to help QSA make some decisions about where do we need further work, further support for our agencies, um, what can we do. 
it will be repeated annually. So when the next one um, comes out, hopefully sometime next year, then you'll have another one following year and we can see how we're progressing um, across the state. So look out for that. Um, again, it will come from the top down, like your uh, CEO and DGs, etc., will be advised that it's coming. But we also do a whole load of ways um, uh, of uh, advising you of how these things happen. So if you're not um, uh, connected to our distribution list, um, sign up to our distribution list. There are a whole number of blogs that we put out. We put out um, a QCN, Queensland, no, Queensland Client News. Which is, uh, which is directed at government clients and is all about record keeping and what's happening. So if you're not signed up for that and you've never had one, then either go to our website and sign up or get in touch with me and I'll get you signed up because that's a great way that we can tell you what's going on. And there we go. And this is exactly where you can find all the rest of the information. So there's a whole range of social media channels that you can use. So there's really no excuse for you to find out what's going on in the record keeping space at Queensland State Archives. And I think that's me, I'm done. How many viewers did we have? Peak of 16, way double figures. Um. <laughs> oh, excellent, that's good. Half of them are from Queensland State Archives. So um, thank you very much. Any final questions, yes, or comments? You're coming with the microphone. <laughs> Been. Um, one, one thing first is the new record governance policy. I think it's great and, and I'm really excited about it because, <laughs> because it actually gives us um, a lot of flexibility, flexibility within absolutely. our organisation and it's actually like a, a new way forward and yeah. I'm really excited about that. I do have one question though. Yep. Can you give us an update on the disposal freeze? Yes, I can. A good point. I did have that in my slides earlier and then I thought I was going to run out of time. Um, the disposal freeze for records that um, are, um, what's the wording, related to, thank you, <laughs> thanks Nancy, related to or maybe related to allegations of child sex abuse um, is still in place. We, You would know hopefully that we sent out a request for you to give us information around what records you have, what they're covered by and how you might be managing those records. Um, we've received all of those responses back and now we are analysing um, what that means. What we want to do going forward is give you some specific advice around, around what records you will need to keep into the future. Um, the redress scheme has now kicked in for Queensland Government, so those agencies that might be involved in um, having to address uh, redress applications um, will need these records for the future. That redress scheme is in um, for at least the next 10 years. Um, and then there are also requirements under the Limitations of Actions Act that there is now no longer any limit of when an action can be brought for child abuse. So this is actually about protecting you, you know, So, but we are looking at how we can give you specific advice about what you need to keep and then how we give you that authorisation to do that in the future. So what we're doing at the moment is analysing that information and sometime in the new year we'll be able to come out and say this is now what you need to do. I have a question. Good. Um, is the baseline survey, the results going to be published anywhere? Like yes. the old survey used to go to yes. Parliament, so, you know, that's um, the happening? Yeah, the results will be published. We'll, we'll um, uh, put, some, put together some sort of report and an, an aggregated sort of um, response. So it might be, oh, you know, so local governments are sort of on the whole 60% compliant, the State Department's at X number or whatever. Um, we are also looking at whether we can give you, again, individualised scorecards, but we're still working through how we might be able to do that. Any other questions? Oh, we've got one online. <laughs> Not where did Joe buy a dress from? <laughs> Angie Garnett said... Hey, hi, Angie. When is the survey being sent to agencies? Uh, sometime in the new year. <laughs> Um, I can't give you an exact date um, yet. Uh, it'll be, we're hoping for the first quarter of uh, 2019, but um, I can't guarantee that yet. We're going through certain processes at the moment. So keep an eye on all of those um, contact methods and you'll find out as soon as we're able to tell you. Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you for having me and um, have a safe trip home on the rest of your journey. Thank you.